Hey everybody, thanks for tapping back into uh, God's new podcast. We got my homeboy, my brother in Christ, John Humphreys here today, and we're going to speak on um, just the, the basics of Christianity, what the fundamental Christianity looks like, um, and then we're just going to see where, where, the, where the Holy Spirit takes it from there. Um, so when we talk about Christianity, well, what's the first thing that comes to your mind when, when someone says they're, they're a Christian? Oh gosh, it's it, honestly like it's changed so much. I'm in an interesting season of like um, a lot more repentance and being less critical of other people. But um, I just think of my my trip to the cross. It's just that, like it's it's a uh, very complicated, simple, you know. <laughs> yeah. So when somebody says they're a Christian, um, but and I and I think I like to know like more about their story because I'm a different. You know, the way my walk worked out is a lot different than, say, like my grandma's, who was faithful, fairly quiet, prayed all the time. Both of my, actually, I had three of my grandmothers. That's kind of how they operated, you know. And for me, it was like when I came into the kingdom, it's like jumping around oh, and, yeah. you know, oh, which yes. I've had to, you know, I think I misunderstood um, some of that stuff and the basics that they had. So I, I, when somebody says they're a Christian, First off, I, you know, it's it's kind of a relief, <laughs> you know what I mean? But also, like, I just think of, like, you know what I mean? I, it it kind of just takes me to the cross when I hear Christian follower of Christ, you know, do you go to church, those types of things, so. Amen, that's good. That's good, bro, I like that. It's, a, it's the same thing. I believe that, you know, each generation is different. You know, we can go all the way back to, uh, you know, the, the Torah, the first five books, and then see where it progresses from there, then into the, the New Covenant, the New Testament. Yeah. And then we have, you know, our day and age, like you said, because I have a grandfather that was a pastor, yeah. and I uh, just spoke about it at prayer this morning. He, when they moved down here from up north, they were staying up north, uh, Beaver Dam Lake is where they lived at. And when they moved down north, I kept trying to get them to plug into some churches, and they went to a few. And my grandfather was like, the man preaching the words got holes in his jeans or, yeah. you know what I mean? He's expecting them to be in a three-piece suit or he can't receive what they're giving. Mm -hmm. um, and we know that, you know, God's starting to break that stuff off of people. You know, we call it kind of a spirit of religion. And I'm not sure that it's truly a spirit of religion. I think it's just they're comfortable, right? Yeah. Like where your grannies is at. You know, they they were good just being quiet and, uh, you know, kind of mm -hmm. in the back scene. And, and people like us, when we get saved, you know, when we have the encounter, at the cross, we go, pew, we shoot right out the gate. Mm -hmm. We're this new, zealous, passionate, on fire baby Christian. Yeah. And now, as we grow older um, in Christ, because you're how old? Um, almost years? 12 years. 12. Yeah. So I got seven. So you're five ahead of me. But as we mature in our walk, you know, we start to get more on that milk and mm -hmm. get off the, or the meat and get off the milk. We find out that it's not, uh, there's more to it than just kind of jumping around, yeah. going full speed ahead. Um, not yeah. counting the cost right. is what I just heard, you know, when we think yeah. of scripture. And I think also for me, like when I got, I was so passionate about what I had just experienced. Like I got yeah. off of drugs and, you know, people were having me tell my story. I was so passionate, but like looking back 12 years in and I've made, I'm, um, I fail on a regular basis and fall, but it was like, um, I was so what people called on fire you know, running and, you know, I was at the front and I was jumping around and I, you couldn't shut me up, but I also was like, my anointing was, you know, up here and my character was down here. And, and I think as I, you know, as I have matured and this is the season I'm in right now. So I'm not saying I've been here for years, but it's like, I look at people like my grandparents and it was like, you know, like they did operate because sometimes we want for our kids like you know, you'll look at them like why aren't they jumping around but it's like their walk with god i have no control over their walk with god and they're still pure yeah. you get what i'm saying so they haven't been delivered from this disgusting person yeah. that they used to be um but that's one of the things with me is like when we talk about like the fun fundamentals recently in life i've had to go back and be like okay like there's stuff i bypassed in the bible or for me I would justify things, and y'all need to hear this. Like, I, I, I could get in the book, you know, I, I could get in the book, and it'd be like, okay, the story of David, or the story of Samson. It's like, okay, yes, I messed up, but David messed up too. Instead of, like, reading the Bible for revelation and growth and to learn and to become more like Christ, 
sometimes I got to a place where I was reading the Bible to justify, I'm yeah, human, yeah. we yeah, all fail, you know, David did this with Bathsheba, so yeah. I'm not yeah. as bad not as Paul. David. Um, and you, one of the texts you'd sent me That's was talking about like strengthening your walk with God. I think when you look at those people in the Bible, it's a beautiful thing because there's only, there's only one perfect, you know, man in the Bible. And there's only a few that are ridiculously righteous. Job, yeah. Yeah. you know what I mean? There's a few in there, but that's what I was doing. And it's like, what I was missing, like is in that, like this relationship with God and what David did, he didn't just do whatever he wanted with Bathsheba. He didn't just get this dude killed. It all sounds horrible until we reflect on our own walk and be like, I may have never had anybody murdered, but I have done and hurt people and I've done them wrong. And maybe it wasn't in my intention, but I had figured out a way to justify it in the word. You know what I mean? But, oh gosh, I can get in. I'm the best. <laughs> like, it's like, oh yeah, like, no, I can. You know, trying to figure out ways to get to heaven, Excellent. still be on fire for God, <laughs> yeah. still do what I want to do. Yeah. yeah. But with that, it was like you start to realize like the there was what they lost. And so what David lost in that action was a child, but also seven days of repentance and running back to God. And when you look at Samson and David, the one thing is, is like when you talk about your walk with God, like why I feel so close to God is because the one thing that I do know that I do is I always run back hard like oh god you know what I mean I and I and I don't even try to justify because like I know I did this in your face I don't know what I was thinking you know what I mean I think that another thing for like uh when I was a new believer I think I wish people would have told me it was like when you start telling Holy Spirit no eventually you're numbing yourself not to all conviction you get what I'm saying if I go to somebody today and cuss out uh, the person working at the gas station, I'm going to feel convicted. There's yeah. other things I can do that are, that are sins too, that I won't feel convicted because I'm so numb in that nerve, yeah. Yeah. you know, and I wish people would have told me that because it's like, I love God so much, but I grieve God so much. And, um, just in that, in those 12 years, and I'm not like, I'm not pointing a finger like a long time ago. I'm saying this is the stuff I battle now. Um, or I shouldn't say battle, but it's this process I'm in now of like looking at instead of moving on to the next thing and asking, you know, and just apologizing to God. It's like, what was wrong with me? Like, what was wrong with my thinking? What was wrong with my brain? And so much of it comes from there were times in my life where I would read, oh, well, Samson still, God still fell on him at the end. But that's the, if you read it from a perspective of brokenness and failure, Samson's one of the saddest books in yes, the Bible. Instead of justification, like you're justifying mm -hmm. your sin. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Samson well, gives you all the justification. Yeah. Yeah. All the justification yeah. <laughs> you ever need to do, whatever you want to do. He gives it to you. But God said, he was like, this dude is going to be a Nazarite. He is born and he's going to, he's going to end his life a Nazarite. Yep. So that also shows us something about God's heart. It's just receiving grace, which is another thing you can have trouble with. You know what I mean? But receiving grace and not abusing grace. You know, I think you said something there too. And then it'll lead us in here. I got uh, seven, seven things. It's basics of Christianity. But I think what you said, when we first come to Christ, I think um, the church in itself as a whole, um, and not picking anybody, the pastor, the evangelist, the prophet, anybody, I think the church as a whole, though, has been failing over the years. We know the word says, be holy for I am holy. Okay, and when we're looking at somebody and they're portraying that holiness when we, we're in the church house or maybe when we're in a small group setting, but then we don't get any transparency as well. If all I see on social media is you're a man of God, you don't slip, you don't trip, none of that affects you, right? So I, I picture you kind of rolling around on a cloud, playing a harp, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Pretty much an angel, right? You're angelic. Yeah. But I think what we need to do as leaders, mentors, disciples is be transparent. Um, the things that we struggle with, we can put out in the open some of them. I understand mm -hmm. some of them you need to confide in your in your spiritual father, you, you know. Yeah. But I think amongst uh, intimate groups and stuff, say, hey, here's where I struggle. You know, I still struggle with um, pornography, um, drugs, drinking, gluttony, gossip. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The list goes on and on. Because if you don't do that, then people will start to look at us as the Savior. And they'll be like, every time they get in trouble, they'll call John. John, I just did this. What am I supposed to do? Bro, take that to the throne of grace. Mm -hmm. Bring that to the Father, right? Yeah. John, I can't wash your sins away. Brian can't wash your sins away. So we got to be mindful of that, I think. Now, the seven basics of Christianity, bro, it says 
Seek God, not sin. So how do you feel um, you can apply that? If somebody says, well, how do I seek God and not sin? Well, your mind's going to try to trick you into those things all looking the same. You know what I mean? I, I think sometimes they're like, I want this relationship. It's got to be God. I want this job. It's got to be God. But um, it's a, I mean, it's a tough one. It's simple. And I think one of the things, like as we talk about like reflection, I in, in my walk, I should have been in the Word. At the end of the day, all of the talking, all of the preaching, all of the worship, all of the, you know, all of that stuff is so amazing and necessary. But it's not going to teach you how to operate what the bible does and how to operate in that if i don't know what the bible identifies as sin then how am i supposed to yes you have holy spirit yes and yes you have discernment you have conviction you have those things but everything everything that i need to know about sin and god is in that book so if i'm not staying sharp in my word and I've done this, like I, I, I speak from experience yeah. and you know, I'm transparent. Yeah. I've done this. It's like, okay, I think I've graduated to some place <laughs> where I can read my Bible once yeah. every week or two. Yeah. But, but there's so many, this is like a roadmap to get us, you, you know, like to, to share the gospel, live, live as righteous as we possibly can and, you know, celebrate in heaven one day, like all of those things. But if we're not in it, you're out here winging it. You're, you start to become God of your own life because you're like, I'm going to make the rules. And I heard Brandon's doing X, Y, and Z. I'm doing better than him, so I'm more saved than oh, him, yeah. and I'm more righteous than him. And this is also stuff oh, yeah. that I've done. It's like, well, I know, you know, the, the further up the ladder you get, leadership, yeah, whatever right. it is, the more yeah. Yeah, crap you know about everybody, you know. And it's so, like, it's so easy for us to be like, well, you know, I know that yeah. Brandon's doing X, Y, and Z. So, you know, I'm more saved than him, you know, instead of just reading my Bible. It does. I'm not we're not going to stand in front of Jesus one day and plea our cases against each other. You know, what I mean, I, I, I'm like, not going to be up there like is. Brandon. <laughs> you know, what I mean, you know, what Brandon yeah. was doing on, you know, yeah, Wednesdays bro. and like that's not how that's going to operate. It's going to be you yeah. and your decisions yeah. and your choices and Jesus. It's not going to be your kids. You know, none of that stuff's going to matter. Like, oh, you know, I did this. You know, all that stuff's not going to matter. It's going to be. And that's a scary thought If you, for me. Like when I had some of these revelations recently, it's kind of a scary thought that, you know, and I know it's Christianity 101, but I am going to be standing in front of Jesus, not telling him what everybody else is doing, but I've got to explain what I did. And if my best efforts are filthy rags, I'm going to be doing a lot of explaining the bad things that I did. You know, yeah, I think we forget that man, uh, you know, that we will. We'll take an account of every word spoken, idle and, and goofing around, whatever it looks like, brother. Scriptures say so. Um, but also, with social media is prevalent, um, we forget that we're to work out our own salvation mm -hmm. with fear and trembling. And I, that last part, fear and trembling, is what we've definitely uh, also let fall to the wayside, not the church, but as believers, because we are, as Christians, trying to conform to the culture of this world. Mm -hmm. And we know what we stand on. We stand on the word of God. But it's like you said, if you're not in this thing and you don't know it, yes, the Holy Spirit will give you a revelation. But what's he going to give you a revelation to what you don't know? <laughs> you know what I mean? mm -hmm. When Jesus said, I am, uh, it's the give us, he uh, stated the, uh, the heavenly prayer, right? Mm -hmm. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Give us this day our daily bread. So we're to come to him every day, yeah. seeking him, you know what I mean? In his word. Um, and if we're not doing that, um, then we'll fall into that sin. And again, I, I totally, I'm with you. Even if I go a day without reading or praying, my inner man suffers and I can feel it. I just know something's off. You know what the I mean? people around me start yeah, suffering so, too. Yeah, yeah, so even, again, it's, it's got to be a daily thing, bro, getting our daily bread because the flesh and the spirit are always at war, bro. The mm. scriptures say they're constantly at war with one another. If we're not feeding one. You know what I'm saying? We're feeding the other. Yeah. So we want to kill one and not kill the other. We, we want, want to pick our spirit. cross up daily, slay Amen. our flesh Amen. daily. And the fear and trembling thing is interesting because it was probably about eight months ago, nine months. It might have been a year. But I woke up in the middle of the night and I was sweating and panicking. And a lot of people are like, oh, that's the devil. It wasn't the devil. It was like it was. And I was like, OK, why? Why do I feel this way? And God started to reveal this stuff to me. He's like, you're not OK. You know what I mean? Like, like you have bypassed a lot of repenting and you have like, you know, so, so you're not okay. Yeah. And I love that God's like that, but it's also like that fear and trembling. Like, oh gosh. So if I, 
yeah, he died in the morning. Yeah. I'm not, you know, everybody be like, oh, John's going to, you know, everybody have their opinion about me. Something I'm going to help. <laughs> but, you know what I mean? Most people are like, oh, John, he'll be in heaven yeah. waiting for you. Maybe yeah. not. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean? Maybe not. not. And, and I woke up and it was like, that was the most frightening Crazy. feeling sure. of like, oh my gosh, yeah. like I am not where I stand right now. I'm not right with God, yeah. you know. Praise God for that. Yeah. yeah, we forget that too, man. That's why I try to tell people, bro, listen, when Jesus said what? The road is narrow, okay? And then what comes after that? Only few will find it. We're scarcely going to be saved, I think. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think if we truly knew that, it would bring some fear and dribbling in. Like, look, bro, you're really... Not right with God right, right. Now, you know? So praise God that he woke you up and, and sweating and panicked. Um, the next one, and here's what leads to the next one. Fear God, not men. I mean, the Bible tells us, right? Again, Scripture says, fear not the one who can destroy the body, but who can destroy the body and the soul. Mm -hmm. um, and to us believers, I think when we hear stuff like that, uh, speaking on me, it does something to me. It shakes, it shakes my inner man. It's like, hey, we got to make sure we're right. You know, not fear man, but the one who control our, uh, destroy our soul and our body. Mm -hmm. Or depart from me, for I never knew you, worker of iniquity. You know, we're out here laying hands, you know, healing the sick, raising the dead. Yeah. And then that's what you get there and you hear. You know, I think to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant, is something we should strive for um, every moment of every day. Isaiah Saldivar said it best, and when I heard it a couple years back, I've never let it go. He said, we look at eternity as if it's something over there far in the corner. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's just, oh, it's it's over there. And especially young minds, um, you know, especially the lifestyle that we live, we're like, well, my grandma and them, they're Christians, right? They're probably praying for me. I'll get right when I'm 60, 70, 80. I got to mm -hmm. enjoy this life right now. But eternity walks right beside us. Yeah. And when in moments notice, boom, your last breath. Bam. And it says to be absent from the body is to, to be with Christ. So, um. Yeah, fearing God is, is a big one, and I think, too, um, from behind the pulpits, we've let that um, die out as well, mm -hmm. and it's the repentance part as well. Nobody wants to hear repent because we're going to get to it further down here in the list, but we don't want to serve God. We want to serve ourselves, yeah. and then we can just be like, well, God's got me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or, I believe in Jesus, um, but when we're saved and we're truly walking with Christ, Paul says it best, follow me as I follow Christ, right? Yeah. Don't say follow me. Follow me as I follow Christ. So we're just in a big line. Yeah. But we're ultimately following Christ. And if we claim to be a believer in the gospel of Jesus, our life should look a certain way. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be out here still doing and struggling with the things that we was before. Because if we come to the cross, we have our encounter, and we're unrepentant, okay? We cry a little bit, do whatever we do at the altars or whatever. But then we turn about face and walk right back out in the world and continue in it. Where do you think you're going to go when you die? Well, we, we don't understand... At least for me personally, I didn't understand what repentance was. I thought it was like, hey, God, sorry. Every time all, I'm sorry yeah. Repentance yeah, yeah. is rough. Yeah, yeah. Like the process of like, because you're also, not only when you open yourself up to like that, whatever it is that you're repenting for, like you have to feel it. So like if you've done it to other people and stuff, like you have to, like if you're, if you're laying before God, like I do not want to go this direction anymore you you're you're probably feeling some of the things that you've created in other people it's and then we were just talking about david seven days you know i mean naked just laying on the floor crying out everybody thinks you're crazy like i think um repentance prayer fasting it's all stuff that we um that jesus talks and about so time. important yeah. And it's like, you, I can get, and you know that we can, I can get 150 people to show up to a worship service. And that's amazing. Yeah. We should praise God yeah. together. Yeah. I have seen people healed in those services, their services. I've seen people give their lives to Christ. I've seen families change. All that amazing. But if we do a prayer meeting, you know what I mean? Small fraction. Yeah, it'd be three. Yeah. It'd Amen. be three. No. And, that so, and, and so, and then the fear of, like the fear of man. This is a tricky thing, I think, that we operate in now, especially like with, and I'm not talking about all, but like the American church and the, the system of there's a hierarchy down. And so in the past, like maybe like when I've made a mistake, I don't think, oh, gosh, God, I think, what are they going to say? You oh, know yeah. what I mean? What is this like? What is this going to cost me? It, it all comes back to what what man you know, and, and then I would sit there and tell you, I don't care what people think. And then I'd be up all night That's caring real. about what people That's think. Real. That's real. You know, because maybe in that moment I felt like I didn't care and I'm yeah. trying to get to that place. But uh, there's been so many times where it's like I should have been so much more worried about what God 
had to saw what God saw and what he had to say than what my pastor or my neighbor or the people on social media, like what people were going to say. I'm going to be worried about people that ain't ever put a dollar into anything we're doing. I've never even met them. And they may have heard something yeah, about right. me and I'm like concerned about it. Yeah. You know what ain't I mean? That, that wild? Yeah. Stupid. And I just think too, I was reminded of the scripture when Jesus tells him, you know, the Pharisees, you guys are like whitewashed tombs. You look good on the outside, but you're dead on the inside. Mm-hmm. We think that we can cover up everything inside of us, thoughts, feelings, say, oh, I don't care what man thinks when, you know, we're lying to not just mm-hmm. the person, but to ourselves. Um, but God looks at the heart and if it's wicked and deceitful, I mean, bro, again, it's, I think it's, I'm coming to grips with you. Like I'm being pulled in another season, you know, with depth and, and, and other things. Um, just seeking God's face more and more every mm-hmm. day, every day. Like I can't get enough of you, the lover of my soul. Me and Terrace talked about it and like, uh, we actually did on the last one, I think. And, and we said like, do we love one another at times? I know I love Tara more at times than I do God. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Cause I, I mean, I've been with a girl for 27 years. She has my heart. Um, sometimes I might love a dog, love a kid. Lord knows I love my iPhone. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> Lord knows, right? I spent yeah. enough time worshiping that thing. Um, and God says, bro, if you love anything of the world, then he is your enemy. You know what I mean? God is your enemy. You're saying I either love God or I love the world, um, which we'll actually get into that too. Um, but I think that's that's really important too, to fear God and not men. If we could honestly do a heart shift and be like, hey, I truly don't care what my pastor, what my whoever is going to say, but run to the to the altar asking God for forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't care who sees me up here bawling, crying, and not even just wherever you're seated at. Again, not even having to run to the altar, but just telling God like, hey, I messed up and I repent. And to do about face and walk in the other direction, but let's run in the other direction. Yeah. And make sure that when I when I'm wanting when I'm wanting to return to that sin that I repented for, I'm not like a dog coming back to its own vomit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because when you watch a dog do that, like throw up and he what's our first thing? We're like, oh, right? I ain't never been around nobody and they're like, Yeah, eat that up, man. Eat it. Yeah. We're like, ugh. And I think that's why the scripture puts it that way, because it's just a it's a grotesque thing to think mm-hmm. about. God's delivered you from, you know, dope or drinking or all of these things. And then you're like, no, I'm good. I'm going to go ahead and try my hand again. Yeah. You know, we're literally the, eating our The mom. whitewashed wall thing's interesting because what, what was it? Almost two years ago, I had the heart attack. And I look like, you know, I mean, I work out. I look like I'm in good shape. And I'm up there, got these hoses and all that stuff. And people were reaching out to me. They were like, you look healthy but what was happening was like people could see the the fruit of the physical labor yeah. that i was doing yeah, the but they couldn't see they weren't seeing like the trips to the drive through that i shouldn't have been making yeah, like so well, inside well, inside i was dying yeah. outside i looked like a freaking warrior you know what i mean i looked like somebody ready for battle on the inside like i was falling Your apart friend, my heart was barely yeah. working for who knows how long and but it was it was because like I was so focused on, you know, the, the what the I could see, sure. what I could see, and and uh, that I mean that woke me up to the internal stuff. But I think that's um, one of the things I, I just people kept saying like you look so healthy even in the hospital you know, when we, they were taking pictures of they were like you look so healthy and it's like yeah I do you know what I mean and a lot of Christians look so Christiany yeah you know what I mean but it's like yeah. it's those midnight trips to the drive through <laughs> yeah, yeah all night. that stuff ain't nobody yeah. saying we talked about that on the last one you. too you know where Paul says you know we're we're in strict training you know what I mean this fight that we're fighting it ain't for the faint of heart we gotta we gotta be strong in all areas um, yeah because I think it's funny that people will look you know at people that go to the gym or whatever and that's the first thing you hear all the time you're in good shape and I tell them no I, bro, I can't hardly do anything without panting mm-hmm. and breathing heavy right I lift weights bro I don't do cardio right <laughs> uh, but yeah that, that's good man um, the next one is love God not the world um, and like I just said this is such a hard one and as and as we're speaking please um, you know I know I've said this numerous times but we're not ministering or preaching or saying this to you we're just having a discussion um amongst ourselves and letting you just tune in tap in and see how we do it as as brothers and believers because i know when i speak these things i'm ministering to my own heart um 
I'm, I'm praying and hoping that someone else catches it. But I'm always, it's always like this with me. That's how God does me. And I, and I know a lot of other believers. So not that we're, we're coming at you. We're just trying to put you on game um, as, as we put ourselves on game. So loving God and not the world. This too. So I just did a slight um, media, social media fast. I say slight because I was feeling like it might have been a month, two months, yeah. but I only made it seven days. <laughs> uh, but that's because my wife is on Facebook a lot too. Yeah. So she's still showing me and telling me, I said, look, girl, you're defeating the purpose here. I'm getting off for specific reasons. And uh, so anyway. you're getting tagged and stuff. You got police and shit. <laughs> Tara take pictures of you napping. Yes, everything you else, know you got to make sure. So see what she's saying. But I did that because Francis Chan, I heard a message. I was walking on the treadmill, man. And uh, it was on a Monday to start the week. And um, it was just about living a quiet life. And mm. it, it, it hit me, man. And it cut me in a manner where I was like, hold up, let me take a step back. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, you'd be posting all the time and, and, and giving these words and this and that and try to get a following and friends and social media pages. But well, it's a lot to keep up with. And I'm like, do I love that more than I love God? You know mm. what I mean? Again, I might be making posts about Yahweh, Yeshua the Savior, but I'm like, is that that's taking up six, seven, eight hours of my day sometimes? Mm-hmm. I could be spending that in God's word studying, you know? How much yeah. deeper could my relationship with him be? So I fell back um for the simple fact and I heard it explain this, uh Body Bachman, man. I heard a I listened to a message that week that that touched me too, because he said, Look, I can love drugs. I can love drugs, but not do them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I can love to drink, but not do it. I can love God, but not worship him. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we get, again, it's a, it's a twist. It's a twisting that Satan does in our mind trying to tell us it's okay. You know what I mean? It's okay that you're spending all this time on social media. You know, you're posting about God, right? Yeah. But again, I'm reminded of the scripture. Depart from me for I never knew you. Mm -hmm. He'll be like, yeah, so what? You laid some hands on some people, bro. You held some services and some groups. You know what I mean? Good for you. Pat on the back. But I never knew you because you spent all that time on your iPhone. You know what I mean? Trying to plug in and. And preach the gospel yeah. mentally, right? <laughs> yeah. So what do you, I mean, do you, I mean, we all struggle. So, I mean, what would, what would you say your, your struggle is loving God and not the world? Oh, man. I mean, it's, I, I think it's been a, like over the 12 years, it's been obvious whether it's, you know, in the past dating stuff and, and like maneuvering things to be, you know, to where it's like, it's not God's will. You know, but it's like, I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to force it through and then God will bless it. And you know, like I'm telling you, I don't know how many times I've tried this with all kinds of different things. Like I'm just going to push this, I'm going to take this job and then God's going to bless it. (laughs) I'm going to do these things and then God's going to bless it. It's not his will and it's not that he can't use it. So for me, I think it's all of the, I've made job decisions in the past, the dating decisions, like I've made so many different decisions and it ha- it was it was my flesh you know there was nothing god about it except Call i it slapped god. his name yeah, on yeah. it yeah so and i think you know so, and that's another thing when we say love the world it's like oh the world's falling apart you know, you know it's not talking necessarily about the entire world and politics and you know what's going on in the middle east it's it's the world is all of these things that aren't god you know all of this stuff outside there of you go. god and if you look at it like that that means you know what I'm saying? If you're um, looking at somebody the wrong way with lustful eyes, you know, all of that stuff. And these are recent, uh, fairly recent, the last year, you know, six months, just the revelation of like that stuff, even sometimes with food or, you know, with food, it's like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Like food can be the world because it's like I so many times like my my night when I don't have my daughters and I have a free night, you know, I will pick up a pizza. I know you guys do this too, <laughs> yeah. but it becomes like the event of my night. I drop them off <laughs> and I'm like, I'm going to whether it's chuck wagon or, you know, pizza or, or, <laughs> and uh, pizza yeah. King. Like I'm going to one of these places right. and it is, you know what I mean? And then I look at it and it's like, I didn't look at like going to prayer you know, going into my time with God, the anything like that. that pizza. It was like, oh, I got to talk to up. Jesus again, right but you know, yeah. let it be a pizza. Yeah. And it's like, oh, yeah. so I think like sometimes we make the world this, yes, the world's ugly. It's fallen. It's dark, but it's not necessarily, and it is, but it's not just talking about, oh, That's you know, awful. I mean, Iran or, you know, 
those you know those things going on in the Middle East or you know the the horrible things we hear going on here to me like when it says you know to not love the world it's all of those little things in it you know we talked about Samson like chasing after all of the things he wasn't supposed to that was the world he was chasing after the world he you know he he sat down his love for God and picked up his love for you know the wrong women you know even just the little stuff like eating honey out of you know, a lion, just every, it can be a lot of things. And I think the trap is, is like, I don't love the world. You know what I mean? It's hard not to, yeah, it's, it's hard really not hard to. not to love the world. And it's really because there's stuff in there that are individual specific traps, you know, our individual specific desires well, of the flesh. The is, is wide, right? Yeah. Wide, wide, one's narrow, bro. It's yeah. everything's the out there. Narrow, the Everything. To, to hell is wide. And uh, you know what I heard while you were speaking was to gain the world. What's a profit a man? What would a profit if you was to have X, Y, Z from the world, but then again you lose your soul, you know? Um, and you speaking of food, whew, boy, it's, I tell you, man, because it's that same spirit. It's the gluttonous spirit that's behind Almost everything that we do, mm -hmm. a lot of us might put down, uh, you know, some drugs or, or some, you, you name it, your gossip or whatever it is. But, bro, you'll get at that pizza, mm -hmm. and, man, I'm good at three slices. I'm going to smash seven, eight, nine, ten, yes. right? <laughs> uh, it, because it's something that we don't pay attention to because it's not evident in the time, right? Because mm -hmm. it's tearing our insides up, but on the outside, we're good type of thing. Um, so I'm always reminded and I've been con being convicted more and more with the gluttony because I'm like, I can't say that I'm that I've laid this down and I don't struggle or whatever. When it's the same spirit behind it, it just jumps. It jumps. Uh, well, we, figures, pick, right? we pick and choose our yeah, sin preferences. Sure, sure. So like I drive by the liquor store and yeah. I'm like, I'm doing amazing yeah, as right. I drive into right. Pizza Hut's drive through <laughs> to pick up, you know, something I do. Yeah. You know, after the even after like the heart attack on, thing, man. it was like the stuff that I. You know, man. Oh, you have to lay off all Dude, this stuff. Oh, doing. when I'm up there with ho tubes in me, I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna lay off that stuff. I'm about to, you know, I'm gonna take yeah, off jogging, so and I get out there. You know, the first thing I'm doing is like, oh, Long John Silver's <laughs> looks good, and I mean, you know, I mean, they <laughs> just they just tapped it, so chicken, we're good to go. Chicken, it's got protein, <laughs> right? Right. Well, it's bread it just taps my heart, so yeah, I know man. I'm good for a couple yeah. more greasy meals. We we do, man. And again, I'm reminded of the scripture like, your God is your stomach. I remember the first time that was revealed to me a couple of few years back. Me and Tara both, we was like, oh wow. How many of us are, you know, our stomach is our God. As soon as we get the, I'm guilty, bro. As soon as I get a cringe of hunger, I'm in the kitchen. I'm rummaging through the, I'm if hungry. I'm bored, if I'm bored, I'm rummaging through the, through the kitchen, man. And, and again, yes. you know, Paul states, he said, you guys, the stomach is your God. Um, so we just put everything. We have so many idols and stuff that we, that we, that we place above God, I think. And because if we're not walking in the spirit, man, we've got to be careful that we walk and we maneuver in the spirit. Because again, you're only walking in one of the two. You're either walking in the flesh or you're walking in the spirit. And I know where God's brought me, me and Tara memorized the fruit of the spirit. You'd always hear people be like, yeah, the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace. And then they, poof, they wouldn't know all night. They couldn't rack yeah, off all night. Right. So I'm like, I want to learn. I want to know them, right? I want to be able to shoot from the hit and have all those. So when I know something's off, I'm like, am I walking in the flesh or in the spirit? If I'm not carrying the fruit of the spirit, then what am I walking in? I'm walking in the flesh, right? So again, just, just walking it like I talk it. Self-control is the time. Like, I oh, think it's that's everybody's the... struggle, bro. Self-control. Yeah. Yeah, again, we're, we're on a, are we going to eat two pieces, bro? We're going to be cool with two pieces? Mm -hmm. When all actuality, we could be good on one slice of pizza. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But we're going to eat however yeah, many we can stuff in our the face. The self-control. And I don't think I've realized it's like, man, I'm not in alignment with the Holy Spirit at all. And if one thing starts to crumble, other things start to crumble. Yeah. If my diet's on, like, and, you know, and I could do a lot better, but, you know, I mean, I've been watching my portions and stuff. But if one thing is off, everything starts to get off balance. And then it's like this long it feels like this long journey back to get where you were. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, I got to find myself. Definitely. Yeah. Well, I think it's funny as I just read through these, man, I'm looking at a man and just jumped out at me. I'm like, it's funny when you get to talking about one of these things. And again, it's just the basics of Christianity that you can't help to lead into the rest of them, I guess, because, you know, it says, believe God, not the deceiver. We've, we've touched on that. Obey God, not your appetites. We're speaking on that now. <laughs> Serve God, not self. Um, so it, it, that should say something right there. Um, again, I think you said it in the beginning. It's picking up your cross daily. Again, it's not every other day or weekly, bro. Jesus said, pick up your cross daily um, and follow me. 
and to follow him are the, and these are just seven. I mean, these are the bas- basics of Christianity. You know, you and I both know we could go so much deeper, mm-hmm. but I feel like there's so much meat right there, especially in the culture that we live in. Um, you know, skipping over, we're going to skip over, uh, believe God, not the deceiver, obeying God, not your appetites. And I'm going to jump down to serve God, not self. A lot of preachers that you hear YouTube and around the globe, um, it is, it's a, it's a motivational speech to make us feel good about mm. who ourself, because our flesh don't want to hear a message of repentance, right? Of you've been deceived. Um, you know what I mean? You're not walking in the spirit. Mm. You're walking in the flesh. You're, you're, you're falling victim to your appetite. You know what I mean? Mm. Instead of obeying God, all of these things. So when we go to church, the pastor's job is to speak scripture because we know faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. Um, I want, bro, I want, when I show up to anybody Sunday on ser- or service on Sunday, I want you to cut me. I don't care how holy I think I've been living. I want to show up, and if you're speaking the scriptures, the word of God, I better get cut. I'm going to get cut. Mm-hmm. I mean, again, I'm not, none of us have made it yet. And I could have had a dope week. I could have not struggled with anything. And still, when I show up, the word of God, is bound to slice me, right? Mm-hmm. And make me feel some type of way. A lot of us look around, you know, especially if we attend the same church and stuff, we're like, man, is the pastor preaching that message to me? Right? Yeah. And that shows you the power of God because if you go to another church, it seems like it never fails. If I go visit another church, that pastor will speak <laughs> on exactly what I'm going through. And I'm like, man, it's the wildest thing. But again, that's the spirit, the spirit of God bearing witness to, to our inner man. Um, and it's just, it's so hard in the in the country in the culture that we live in today to not get wrapped up in that jesus said you will be persecuted mm-hmm. he also told him you will suffer for my name saying you will suffer and man we don't you know again we lose so much on social media if somebody jumps in our comments and wants to uh say something we're like oh we're being persecuted mm-hmm. man it really ain't even that that real right I've um, never, in, in my time in America as a Christian, we, we I've never faced persecution. I had the man flu a couple of weeks back, and yeah. I just laid in bed. I told Tara, I told, said all day, oh, Jesus, I'm suffering for you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I felt horrible. Yeah. Uh, but in that moment, I'm like, the suffering, even the suffering, I want to I want to praise and bless his yeah. name. I want to worship him in those moments where I think it's bad when it's really not even, you know, God's on the throne laughing like, oh, son. You know, mm-hmm. you can see what I see right now. Yeah, so to, to not to not give in to, to what we want all the time. And again, I think if we're truly intentional about our time with the Father, we know His voice better than we do ours. And when we, we would get out of the habit of saying, I'm going to take this new job. God's, yeah. God's opened this door, right? God's opened that door. I'm going to yeah. take that job. Like you said, we're kind of like forging His name, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and we're saying, we're slapping God on it and saying God said to do this. Yeah. When really, um, again, I, I, I just studied it a couple months back, but when... Uh, uh oh gosh i just had it ishmael ishmael um abraham when uh sarah calls in hagar to sleep with him right because mm-hmm. they're jumping the gun god's like right. i've got a son for you but they're just doubting right they're mm-hmm. like well when are you going to move god when are you going to move so like 10 years something passes so she invites her in and uh hagar bells or they bear a son ishmael and god's like look dude i told you i'd give you a son sarah ends up pregnant and then there's the strife and everything well that's because he moved. Abraham moved outside of the will of God. God said, I got this for you, right? Mm-hmm. Just sit still. I got this for you. And instead, they moved on their own will and in their flesh. And, and we're still having wars. Yeah. And they suffered for that. Because of that. Yeah. 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 We're, we're, we're still, still having yeah. wars. Yes. I mean, God comes right. through, but there's always repercussions always. of you if moving. You move in the flesh. It's like one of my daughters, like you're saying, the cosign thing. If one of them stole my credit card, signed my signature on it, they're in trouble. We're going to work it out. Right. To the best of what we can, but you're still, you're I'm going to be all right. Yeah, bro. You yeah, know what I mean? And, but we'll figure it out. But I think with that, and the service thing, I think we've really confused it. Like, I enjoy chopping it up, and I think it may sound weird coming from me because I do the social media and the videos and stuff. But, you know, when you go to speak, there's a misunderstanding of me with a microphone. I love doing it. You know, we talk, we talk at schools, like, uh, fentanyl prevention, you know what I mean? All of that stuff. And I love doing it. You know, I do feel like I'm a messenger, but people have got it so confused. Like me with a microphone is cute ministry. You get what I'm saying? Like, that's easy. That's the easy ministry. And you hear a lot of people like, Hey, 
I want to do what you do. And it's like, well, what do you think I do? <laughs> yeah, though, yeah, like, yeah. Like, yeah. Call, to call the salvation. You know, all, you know the, I think the, yeah. the, the flip side, and it's I don't really get cool into stuff. too much of the other stuff that I do service wise, but you, I don't like, I'm, at, I'm on other people's schedules and their needs um, constantly. And I'm, and people have, have access to me that most people um, may not ever understand. And it's, it's the world, you know, this is not me complaining. This is the world I stepped into. But as I think with the service thing, it's like, if you are too good, and I know like there's memes and everything else, but if you're too good to fold chairs, you're not good enough yeah. to be holding to be holding a microphone yeah. because at the end of the day if it's an upside down kingdom and the least of us if john the baptist is still the lead, you know jesus said out of his mouth if the least of us is the best of us those of us like me i get blessed because of the positions god's put me in that means i'm down here you know what i mean and i always have to remember that i'm not you know, because I get a couple of likes on Facebook or because I get asked to go speak. I, and again, I love being a messenger and there's a lot more to it than that, but I am the least, you know I mean? That means anybody I drive, if I drive by a homeless man, um, on my way to go speak to 500 people, I have to look at him and be like, he's better than me. And I need to treat him like he's greater than me. So with Jesus is looking down now, the, the spotlight's on him. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm just the messenger. And, 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 and the Bible, if you read it, shrinks you up. We're all loved. You know, he died for all of us. And I get that. It shrinks you up. Because, you know, it's another thing. It's like I had an encounter with Jesus Christ that saved my life. Like I had an encounter with Christ never used again. But the Bible says, blessed who he be- is he who believes and has not seen. Right. So you get what I'm saying? Like, I, it's my faith. I have faith, but it wasn't, it wasn't born in hard faith. It was, I met Jesus. I have, I have to believe. Yes. Now, I don't have to follow or do any of that stuff. Yeah. I got to believe. Yeah. You know what I mean? I saw, that, like, the, I am a miracle. So, and that keeps you humble. Because it's like, okay, because I met Jesus, people want to hear this this testimony because yeah. people want to hear this testimony you polish up the speaking stuff and everything goes and you know you start getting asked to go places and people start to notice you but i am blessed here you get what i'm saying when i go up to the kingdom they're not gonna be oh john's here they're gonna be like here's a dude that met jesus hopefully they say he did what he was supposed to do come on through and there's gonna be some old lady behind me that made cupcakes for every prayer meeting and everything like that. And when she steps up, it's gonna be like she, you know, yeah. she's gonna they're gonna celebrate yeah. her. Yeah. It's like this lady that have the court condo, yes, always, always brought the something condo. to the potluck, yeah. the you know, and always opened up her home. Those are the people, and I think that like the, yeah, and the servant thing, we we have to stay humble because what the world says is you know if you do music and if you get views and if you have a microphone like you have made it what the kingdom says if you're in when you when you're serving you make it you know well i love that you brought that up the least shall be the greatest uh again we we always leave all again because you don't hear that on us at most services and most preachers don't tap into that part of it man that the least shall be the greatest and that you know we stack our riches in heaven and we're not to go after earthly things because we know down here this is where the moss eat them up the fire is going to kill it all mm-hmm. anyway right um but we stack our riches in heaven and also <clears throat> our in our culture we always want to um and not that there's a bad thing with it um helping the homeless or, or doing whatever we're doing for the mission right for the mm-hmm. mission that god's placed us on um but to do, we gotta remember, we gotta do some stuff low key, right? Because yeah. Jesus says, "Don't be like that man on the corner, speaking yeah. and preaching and doing all those things. Do that where you will be rewarded, bro. And that's in yeah. a secret place. I don't always have to come drop you off some some lunch to the homeless guy sitting on the corner um, and take a picture of it. Right. Why don't I just do that? Let God see me, right? Let God yeah. see my works, um, so that again I might be blessed because of it. Yeah. Um, but again, it, it, who are we serving, bro? Are we serving God, right? Are we serving. Uh, you know the the king of glory or are we serving our flesh because our flesh loves um the likes the clicks the yes. shares on facebook um when we post a picture doing our good deeds but again i'm always reminded i try to remember um it's good for the world to see let them see that god's changed our heart and our mm-hmm. life and that we are servants and we are we're we're striving to be the least of the least right that's why i'm always like keep me low keep me humble um and if i ever think i'm higher Lord, go ahead and break me, right? Yeah. Uh, but our flesh always wants the other. Our flesh wants to, to 
to look good, feel good yeah. at times. Uh, so just, yeah. We have to operate with Holy Spirit in that stuff because I have, like for me, I have a message. So where is the line? You know what I'm saying? Because if Paul, Peter, if they would have had social media, they would they would have used it, oh, yeah. maximized oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. it yeah. 100%. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Um, but, like, you know what I mean? And, and for us, like if you run a service, like I may need help from the community with something. So we're posting, hey, we need yes, help yes. from you for so something. I'm saying there's a, you got to, yeah. and again, you have to have that discernment. Mm-hmm. Right? And, and there's so much stuff. And there's so much yeah. stuff because a lot of people be like, oh, well, they're over there, you know, doing this and that and getting attention. It's like, but here's my thing. And because I've stepped into this new season, like, and we've talked about this on phone calls, like not being so critical, I don't know what they're doing. And it's not my business. So <laughs> praise God if they're doing something great. And... You know what I mean? If they're doing something shady, praise them anyway. You know what I mean? Like, bless them anyway, Jesus, because, you know, it doesn't have anything to do with anything Jesus your told me. Your salvation ain't on the line, right? No. That's where I'm trying to I'm trying <laughs> to walk into that, right? Like, yeah, who cares what dudes on the left doing, dudes on the right doing? Like, I'm focused. Let me focus on this narrow path, yeah. you know what I mean, and entering the gates of heaven. Jesus has yeah. me praying for all kinds yeah. of people right now that yeah. I used to just not like. Right, right. amen. Now no, when I think no, about them, it's it. like, okay, hey, God bro, bless Hey, bro, that pray for your enemies is real, huh? Right. That's really scripture. You're sitting there, and, and, and at first, like, it's almost a training because right. it's like, tastes like crap. Yeah. It's like, oh, bless them, Jesus. And it's like, <laughs> I don't mean that. I want to mean that, but bless them, Jesus. Man, for real. So I just for keep real. saying, it's like, yeah. make me, make me believe it, you know, make me change my heart and i think that's the biggest thing for me nowadays is just like anything that i'm feeling off offended anything like that it's 100 percent almost yeah. always yeah. almost oh it's my heart you know what i mean and it's my spirit and it's something with me if somebody walks in the room and i'm and they can make me mad that's a me thing you know if somebody posts something and it drives me crazy it's like it's a me thing we talked about that you know that's some some things that i'm kind of going through again so that's the fast social media that type of stuff you know and this very last one is worship god not comfort um again we've talked about that but we need to get into a place man as a body of believers and remember that scripture also states one mind one body one accord um i should be able to um worship god in all things and again this isn't just a worship service worship is is worshiping God with your with your life, with your temple, with your body, with your words, with your actions, with your clothing, with your job, with everything. Bro. Okay, mm-hmm. we worship God as as believers in everything that we do. Um, my bracelet actually right here, bro. So I got it. Whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. First Corinthians ten thirty one. That's why I got. I'm like to remind me that even in the bad times, glory to God. Mm-hmm. Uh, car breaks down on side. Glory to God. What's He keeping me from? Cards denied at the grocery store. You know what I mean? What's it? Glory to God. What's he keeping me from? I've been trying to get into that mentality to understand that that's really all I'm created for. Mm -hmm. I'm created to bring the father glory. Okay. He came down, wrapped himself in flesh. And what did Jesus say to the father? It was always, I do what I see the father doing. I say what I see the father saying. I do what I'm told. You know what I mean? Pretty Mm -hmm. much to bring glory and honor to my heavenly father, to Yahweh. Um, and, And again, not. Not that we can't be comfortable. We're again, we live in America, right? So we're we're comfortable no matter what. We're comfy. Yeah. Um, but I would encourage everybody to get outside your comfort zone. You know what I mean? Don't stay in that little box that you built for yourself where you know you got your favorite recliner chair in there and the heat's on full blast and it's negative twenty out. Get a little uncomfortable, get out in the street, you know what I'm saying? Feed somebody, close somebody. Take somebody for a lunch date that's not a believer and speak Jesus into them and get them saved, right? Get get their yeah. name. In the Lamb's Book of Life, man, uh, that's what it really looks like. But we're 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 cruising at like fifty minutes, and that's why I keep squinting at the phone, trying to make sure we <laughs> uh, hour and some change deep. Um, but my brother here is going to just I wanted him to kind of plug himself in. He's getting ready to start his podcast. He's not sure exactly what it's going to look like yet. He's got all the gear to do it, um, and he's definitely like you said, got twelve years of ups and downs and ins and outs and he's going to have a couple more my brothers on there with him so i just want him to kind of plug himself in and give y'all so yeah one of the things we one of the things i do is we go to schools and that's uh cody and john.com um and on social media it's cody and john speak we are uh we try to help the students get um you know understand that they have a purpose um so we're, we're big into decision making but also uh fentanyl awareness and primary prevention we have a bunch of good feedback you can uh, go to the website and look on that we've had a lot of success reaching out uh, reaching students um and another thing yeah we're going to start um 
we're, we're going to start a podcast up. Uh, one of them we're going to do is with uh, Cody and uh, Cody Knuckles and Brian Blevins. I'm um, still figuring out what that's going to look like, doing some um, test runs, and we're going to go around and see what some other people are doing and um, get some advice from them. And then we'll probably start one. Um, I'll probably be working on one as well that focuses a little bit more um, deep into people's testimonies. And not just, a lot of people that know me think everything's going to be addiction recovery. It's going to be, you know, just what, like what God has done for people and start to talk about miracles. And also maybe take some time to um, talk about my experiences and Bible breakdowns because it was like what Brandon was saying. I personally, um, I don't wave a finger and tell people what they need to do. Most of my stuff is like I have, made mistakes i have you know done these things in like the process of um just just getting out of that or what it looked like for me um so there's a bit of i think the people that know me know there's a transparency you never like you'll never get a hold of me and like i'm gonna start preaching at it. yeah it's yeah. like this is what i'm going through with god you know and always trying to grow so um to, to if you just follow um just follow me on facebook uh, i'll keep all of that stuff updated so you can uh get involved in that. But I'm encouraged. I think there's so many, we had a Friday night service. There's so many amazing testimonies. We probably had 70 over the few years that I did it. Um, and I'm excited because, uh, I just, I want to get that to a, a bigger audience. And there's so many people even here locally, the fact that we have 70 some testimonies from, you know, mostly Grant County, but also Huntington, Wallbash and some yeah, other right. places. Yeah. 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 Blackford. Uh, and I think that's good, bro, what you said, too. I, I'm, sometimes I'm forgetful of that, um, that, yeah, Peter and Paul, you know what I mean? The the head honchos of the, the Great Commission. If they had social media, bro, they'd be pumping it. Yeah. They'd be pumping it like nobody's business, bro. They'd be going live, preaching sermons, you know what I mean? Uh, Lord knows the memes that they would come up with. Uh, so so it's, it's, it's good that we that you said that because it's good that you think on that. Like, don't don't think – that so there's good and bad there social media has given everybody a voice which is good for some bad for others you know but praise god we're all entitled to our own opinion but if you're if you're going to get on facebook man and do uh, or any social media site tiktok instagram um, make sure that you're you're given word the word of god right that it's just not your opinion and, and stuff like that because there's a lot of what we would say false teachers you know what i mean and stuff nowadays as well so be grounded and rooted in your word but man evangelize like crazy you know what i'm saying because you would be shocked um at a video that you might post john sharing a story and bam you just won 10 souls for christ and all you did was kick back push record on the thing and post it you know yeah. i mean how 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 glorious is that i mean that's a glorious thing because that's not even local people you might have just touched somebody's life in China, I got a lot of friends uh, from Ghana, uh, from South Africa on my page, and these are brothers that message me and everything. So, you know, sometimes the things that we speak and preach, it's re reaching other continents. Mm -hmm. So that's a pretty dope thing that the Lord's gave us. Use your voice. Yes. Yeah. Everything we're saying, like like when we talk about being transparent and repenting, all of that stuff is accurate. But don't disqualify yourself because you've made a mistake. That's right. Because so many, we've seen people just totally fall off because of that. But also, like, I've wasted a lot of seasons, like, feeling like not only do I need to repent, but I need to beat myself be up. Right. I need to shut up. And so use your <laughs> voice. And, and remember, the gospel is beautiful, and it's, it's, it's simple. Yes, so when you start, awesome. you don't always have to get into theological yes. stuff to spread the, spread the gospel. Amen. Know Jesus. Know what Jesus did. Amen. Know what he did in your life. Everything should yes. line up and share Good it. Testimony. Hallelujah. Well, all right, brother, we're going to jump off here, man. We're pumping almost an hour. Um, so if you would, man, would you pray us out? Yes, Father. Okay. Father, we're just grateful for this time together. We pray that um, everything we said it was in your will and in alignment with you. We pray for everybody that's watching this or listening to this today. I um, mean, anything that they may have going on, Father, just reveal yourself to yes, them. Yourself. Um, lead them to the the right body of believers or wherever it is that they need to, you know, find that peace. And just anybody listening to this today, if they feel any conviction, just, you know, help them through the repentance process and help them to find you. In Jesus' name, Jesus name. amen. amen.